It's been pretty fun revisiting these games to rank them. It's been a pretty great decade for video games when all is said and done, and there were plenty of games that could have made an expanded list, and so far the next decade is looking pretty exciting too. So without further ado, here's the top 10 video games of the 2010s. Number 10, Inside, 2016 from Playdead. Available on iOS, Windows, Xbox One, PS4, and Switch. A simplistic indie side-scrolling game, Inside is a visually captivating and eerie game. It tells a story rife for interpretation, all without uttering a single word. Though it's pretty easy to die, challenge isn't really the point of the game. It rotates seamlessly between edge of your seat with chase sequences and stop and look around you with its creepiest bits. It's darkly surreal and very worthy successor to last decade's Limbo. Frankly, it's better than Limbo. Number 9, Alien Isolation, 2014 from Creative Assembly. Available on Windows, OS X, Linux, PS3, PS4, Xbox 360, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. Video games are pretty famously created as something like a power fantasy. Players are destined for greatness, get superpowers, level up, become the savior of these worlds, and it's a big part of what makes them so fun. But sometimes, the best experience depends on removing the player's power. Alien Isolation is a survival horror game that, like all great entries in the genre, recognizes that the tension and suspense is heightened if players have less power. A sort of sequel to Ridley Scott's original Alien film, we follow Ellen's daughter, Amanda Ripley, as she searches for her lost mother. It takes her to a space station that, shockingly, has been subjected to a xenomorph infestation. The effectiveness of the design centers around the fact that the xenomorph can't be killed or harmed. If it catches you, it's, well, it's game over, man. Instead, you must hide, craft tools to distract it, and cautiously inch your way through all the missions. The alien AI is also somewhat random, which means that you can't simply expect it to show up at, some, at the same point every time. And this keeps you on your toes, and really creates a world of anxiety. Your best tool is not a gun, but your motion tracker, which is key to knowing the whereabouts of the xenomorph, the working Joes, and even other humans who are sometimes hostile. If you're one of those weirdos like me who loves Alien but feel the franchise got away from its slower, more atmospheric, intense origins, then this game is pretty much in that style. But it does still have something for the fans of its sequel, Aliens, as well. Number 8, Thomas Was Alone, 2012, Mike Bithell. Available on Windows, OS X, Linux, iOS, Android, PS Vita, PS3, PS4, Xbox 360, Xbox One, and Wii U. The quirky, funny, sometimes sarcastic British narrator has turned into a bit of a trope in video games, but it was perhaps most successful with the indie hit Thomas Was Alone. Sincere and touching in its tale of shapes that represent AI programs as they come to terms with who they are and how they fit in, it's one of the most emotionally relatable stories on this list. And again, the characters are all just... shapes. More, creator Mike Bithell does an excellent job using game mechanics to convey character and development, too. Each character slash shape has a unique ability which is, at first, the thing they're all insecure about to various degrees. And yet once they all start interacting with each other, these abilities all work together and are necessary for getting through the levels. As a result, these characters start to grow in confidence and see their value. It's a pretty rad concept and a great example to display that game mechanics and storytelling do not have to be separate components of a video game. Indeed, the best games merge the two. Number 7, A Plague Tale, Innocence, 2019, from Asoba Studios, available on Windows, Xbox One, and PS4. Naughty Dog wasn't the only developer to make incredible single-player narrative-driven adventure games. Asoba Studios came late in the decade to make one of the most enthralling and visually engaging entries in this list. Taking place in mid-1400s France amidst the Black Plague, it's a gripping tale of a young girl suddenly charged with taking care of her younger brother. We've seen plenty of games in which the older dude has to accept his role as a father figure, and caregiver, you know, Bioshock Infinite, God of War, The Last of Us, you know, sad dad games. But we don't often see women in games having to embrace that role themselves. A Plague Tale Innocent does just that, all while giving players the ability to sick crazed rats on enemies and giving them the deadliest sling this side, the Valley of Ela. 6. Horizon Zero Dawn, 2017 from Guerrilla Games. Available on Windows and PS4. One look at this game and you'll see why it quickly emerged as one of the most exciting games in a long time. Robot dinosaurs and animals? Yup! Mixing futuristic, high-tech sci-fi styles with a more lo-fi one for the humans works far better than it should. There is certainly a case to be made that it kind of appropriates Native American cultures a bit, but the visual aesthetics work incredibly well. 
Most importantly, the game is fun. With slings, bows and arrows, and traps, players use any number of resources and weapons at their disposal to take down these techno dinos. That includes utilizing the world's own ecosystem. Nothing is more satisfying than getting a robot bull to attack a robot crocodile while you sneak away to fight another day. The most clever part of the design? Not only are you never given a shield, there's no block button to begin with. Mobility is the name of the game. It's such an entertaining and active combat system that even the otherwise tedious side quests offer something positive, because it has you playing. It doesn't hurt that the playable character, Aloy, is endearing and voiced by the incredible Ashley Birch. A sequel cannot come fast enough, to be totally honest. Number 5. The Last of Us, 2013, from Naughty Dog, available on PS3 and PS4. Naughty Dog's crowning achievement, The Last of Us, represents the pinnacle of storytelling in video games. The script is tight, with loads of setups and payoffs. The character writing is arguably the best in all of gaming, and the emotional roller coaster turns what would have been an otherwise generic and bland zombie apocalypse game into the most captivating story of the decade. It also features one of the best examples of collectibles and environmental storytelling. There's perhaps no better duo than Joel and Ellie. It's also probably Naughty Dog's best work from a gameplay perspective, too. As to be expected, there are plenty of thrilling action set pieces scattered throughout, but mostly it's a survival horror stealth game that works pretty well. It's not the most incredible from either perspective, whether it's a survival horror or stealth game, but it's solid and fun. There's also your typical third-person shooter mechanics, which are definitely improved from the previous Uncharted games, but still not the strength of the company. The Last of Us is absolutely a shining example of the narrative capacity of video games. Number 4, Bloodborne, 2015, from From Software, available on PS4. Video games don't have to tell a story, of course, or at least they don't have to focus on it. From Software has excelled at games that are incredible explicitly because of the way that they play. Bloodborne tops its predecessors in the Demon's Souls Dark Souls series by doing one very simple thing. Removes the shield. While the previous Dark Souls and Dark Souls 2 games were excellent, they did encourage more conservative playstyles with shields. In fact, the first Dark Souls is definitely beatable by simply hiding behind it, waiting for your moment, circling around, and then stabbing them in the back. One does not need to actually get good to beat them, contrary to what counter critics online say. By simply removing the shield, it forces players to focus more on mobility, and encourages faster and more action-oriented and, frankly, more fun and satisfying combat. Even more, director Hidetaka Miyazaki replaced the shield with a gun and made parrying not just a part of the game, but essential. For more conservative players, Bloodborne is likely going to be a substantially more difficult experience than Dark Souls. They throw more enemies at you at once, while bosses are also faster and much more agile. But if you get the hang of Bloodborne and the style of play they're constantly encouraging, it will, and I mean this quite literally, make you better at Dark Souls. You have to really appreciate a game that makes people retroactively better players in past games and increases their enjoyment of other games when they revisit them. No joke, Bloodborne made me get better at and like Dark Souls more. Number three, Portal 2, 2011 from Valve. Available on Windows, OS X, Linux, Xbox 360, and PS3. The cake may be a lie, but the idea that Portal 2 is perhaps the funniest game is not. A solid puzzle game that expands exponentially on the core mechanics of the original, Valve created the neatest puzzler of the decade. And they crafted levels and an experience to be played cooperatively with a friend. The game and its levels are all great, but what really takes the metaphorical cake is its story and villains. Players must team up with former baddie GLaDOS in order to stop the new AI robot in Wheatley, voiced to absolute perfection by Steven Merchant. It's hilarious and builds upon the already unique and standout concept of the game. And you know, it doesn't hurt to add one of J.J. Simmons' best performances pre-Whiplash. Number 2, Undertale, 2015 from Toby Fox. Available on Windows, OS X, Linux, PS Vita, PS4, and Nintendo Switch. The indie darling of the decade, Toby Fox's retro-style Earthbound-esque RPG is full of charm and humor. He also crafts a combat system around one of the most clever morality systems of the decade. Instead of forcing players to make a single binary choice in a given moment, Fox opts to leave it to players in the battles themselves. The central premise is that players can either fight enemies like they would in any RPG, although its combat system is unlike the others, or, through a selection of the right non-violent actions, you can essentially work out your differences. You can spare any enemy, including all of the bosses, including the final bosses. 
The two styles have come to be known as pacifist and genocide, which tells you a lot. It's a very clever, often challenging game full of meta humor and references to classic games. And you know, two of its most popular characters are primarily font jokes. This, personally, has been an absolute comfort game for me, one of which I can pick up and play at any time. Certainly it doesn't hurt that it's played over a soundtrack that Fox scored himself, and is one that stands up among the all-time greatest. Number 1. Dark Souls 3, 2016, from From Software. Available on Windows, PS4, and Xbox One. Building oh. off of what he learned with Bloodborne, director Hidetaka oh. 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 Off the Dark Souls Oh shit! Fuck, fuck, fuck! He finds just the right what? balance of the slow and severe style of combat. Oh. First Dark Souls, fuck. and faster, more agility-driven combat. He works in references to the past games wonderfully, and has ironed out the franchise so thoroughly that it's hard to imagine there being room for improvement at this point. The real strength of the game, however, is in its bosses. People perhaps derive the many, many bosses of Dark Souls 2 a bit too much, and they probably praise the bosses of the first game a little more than they should as well. Yet Dark Souls 3 has some of the most visually stunning and challenging bosses of the series. Personally, defeating the Dancer of the Boreal Valley was without question the most gratifying gaming moment of the 2010s for me. Nothing gave me a greater high than that. But it wasn't just her. Most of the bosses made me feel that satisfaction that the director is known to provide the circumstances for. You may have noticed that there is a very notable exclusion to this list, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Practically every Miyazaki game made it onto the list except for that one. It just didn't click with me. I appreciate the difference in approach, but it just wasn't my thing. Dark Souls 3, however, gave me everything I wanted. The right level of challenge, the perfect amount of euphoria upon success, an eerie environment. It may have at times been a bit of a Dark Souls greatest hits, but it really seemed to perfect the franchise. Yes! What the f***? What the f*** we did it? Holy f***! Those are my favorite or best games of the decade. The new decade is shaping up nicely as well, with many projects coming down the pipeline that should be pretty incredible. And how many are originals versus sequels to some of these games? Who knows, but hopefully I won't be raving about games centered around a plague of some kind in the midst of a global pandemic when I do my best of the 2020s, if we survive the 2020s.